after having been programmed by the Kremlin brainwashers, I'm here. I'm here to talk all of my crazy left-wing socialist vibes. <laughs> um, Greta Thunberg just made her transatlantic uh, sailing. She arrived here, a lot of hullabaloo over it. And so we got to hear all the dumb climate change deniers. Interesting study just came out. There's a whole like misogynistic angle about it. You ever notice how like a majority of the climate deniers are like men, like white males? There's female climate deniers, but most of them are white males. And this study has shown that a lot of like white, like right wing white males view climate change as some sort of feminist or feminism or female thing that is like a threat to their masculinity or whatever, which I'm a white male and climate change denial is, doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. W tell me the, give me one downside to just a cleaner, more efficient country and planet. Let's say all these scientists are wrong. Let's say the scientists that are paid by the oil lobby, they're right. Let's say that it is just cyclical. Let's say that fossil fuels, <laughs> I don't know. Let's just say for argument's sake, those, all those things, what's wrong with cleaning up the country? What's wrong, you know, just from a national security standpoint, we should get rid of Middle Eastern oil, stop using oil. What if we just put solar panels that were built in America by Americans on every roof? What's the downside of that? Even if you really believe that, that, that the climate is not collapsing because of fossil fuels, What's the downside of wind turbines and solar panels and cars that run on, you know, um, vegetable oil or, or electric? I have an electric car or um, hydrogen. What's wrong, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with this cleaner stuff? Getting rid of single-use plastics. Getting rid of petroleum-based plastics, which just, just garbage. Just getting rid of garbage. The five islands of floating garbage in the oceans across the world. What if we just got rid of those that are killing marine life? Marine life eating plastic is not good, right? I don't, I don't, I don't understand it, but we're going to get into the ridiculousness of it. On her first day of sailing, a multimillionaire Brexit activist tweeted that he wished a freak accident would destroy your boat. You want a teenage girl to die just because you don't agree with her? You're a psychopath. A conservative Australian columnist called her a deeply disturbed messiah of the global warming movement, while the British far-right activist David Vance attacked the sheer petulance of this arrogant child. Wow. Right? Wow. Those kids with the MAGA hats that were getting in the face of that Native American dude? They're bold, standing up for their rights. So if they stand up for a conservative thing, they're good, smart, young kids. Ugh, unreal. A former Trump staffer, Steve Malloy, recently called Thunberg a teenage puppet and claimed that the world laughs at this Greta charade. No, just um, the oil lobby is threatened by it. So they have to do whatever they can to prevent it, right? Sweden's Chalmers University of Technology have for years been examining a link between climate deniers and the anti-feminist far right. Which, I'm sure this is true, and then there's no two ways about it, and I'm going to show in a second here, the oil lobby pushes climate denial. Because if you, they always talk about, well, the, and they call it the big greed, I'm going to show you this video, it's... Big Green, that's their name, that they came up with a think tank that climate change activists, the Sunrise Movement, Sierra Club, National Resource Defense Council, all those organizations, they're calling them Big Green, that they're just in it for the money. So if you subscribe to that, that it's all about the money, then you cannot deny that the oil industry makes way more money than anybody. It's simple. If you just go by logic, and following the money, the minute we pivot away from fossil fuels, the oil industry and the coal industry lose billions, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars, right? So they have to fight this by putting climate change denial out there and spending all this money to put that out there, right? 
But this is what the study came concluded. For climate skeptics, it's, it was not the environment that was threatened. It was a certain kind of modern industrial society built and dominated by their form of masculinity. Now climate activism's challenge to their way of life, male reactionaries motivated by right-wing nationalism, anti-feminism, and climate denialism increasingly overlap the three reactions feeding off one another. Yeah, it is interesting that the climate deniers are typically men who feel like threatened, they feel like attacked on all sides. Like that's, they feel like the white male has been attacked on all sides. But really what has happened is the white male has been eviscerated by capitalism as we all have, as anybody, any ethnicity, right? So when the white males were the only ones in the workplace, they didn't have to compete, you know, for a job. They only had to compete for a job with another white male. Then they had to start competing with jobs with people of color and women and gays and all this other stuff. So they feel like, oh, my, they're attacking my way of life when it's just like, no, you don't get to be the only ones that get to do this. You, 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 you know, just think about it. The key positions at all of these institutions were always just dominated by white males. Again, in capitalism, you have to compete for a job. So the only person you had to compete with, and when they started losing their jobs, which was their jobs were taken away by globalization, they were then told, oh, the minority took your job, the woman took your job, the gay guy took your job, whatever, that took your job, you know? When in fact, your job was, I always say this, immigrants didn't take your job, billionaires did. Billionaires shipped your good paying union jobs out of the United States and Western Europe to cheaper labor pool countries like China and Southeast Asia and India. That's who, that's why your job got taken away. Capitalism has been screwing you over. Not women and climate change. And a Green New Deal would actually put you and everyone else back to work. That's the thing. The solution, a Green New Deal, f resisting it, I don't, it's like, here's an answer that helped it. You want your $25, $30 an hour union job with benefits back? Here it is. It's making wind turbines. That's, that's where it is. That's where that job is. It's not Trump's tariffs on China that are actually hurting farmers. It's not $1.5 trillion tax breaks like Trump gave his rich billionaire buddies. It's not a middle ground climate approach like Joe Biden said, which is a wink and a nod to the oil guys that put money in his pocket. But let's go back to this study. There is a package of values and behaviors connected to a form of masculinity that I call industrial breadwinner masculinity. They see the world as separated between humans and nature. They believe humans are obliged to use nature and its resources to make products out of them. The color to this is that the climate science for skeptics becomes feminized or viewed as oppositional to assumed entitlements of masculine primacy. They did polls like a person that brings a reusable uh, you know, canvas shopping bag to the store is view who would do that. And they just like, uh, a, a woman or a sissy would do that. My plastic bag. I take pride in this plastic bag. That's bad for you. It's bad for your environment. I swim in the ocean and there's floating plastic in the ocean, which cripples marine life. That's not a good thing. It has nothing to do with gender. It's a pretty fascinating study. It starts to explain, you start to go, oh, it is always those type of guys that feel threatened by any of this change that are like the ones that scream the loudest about, ah, this is climate denial, you know. In a recent poll, one out of three Germans said that Thunberg has changed their views on climate change. She's pretty, she's, and again, when you stand out and you start affecting change, and they're crunching the numbers. They're seeing more young people get involved. They're seeing the sunrise move. They're seeing these climate strikes are motivated by younger people. And when she says, you took away my childhood, you're taking away my future, and some adults go, wow, that we need to do more. And then some adults get threatened. Like this woman. Greta, I saw your presentation at COP24. 
and it was compelling, but I respectfully dispute your statements. A child is a miracle, Greta. A child should be able to live in joy, entranced by the wonder of the world, not in fear of the future or hatred of their elders. You caused this problem. <laughs> Stop living in fear of a problem that we created. It's like, Oh, you young people, you're all so anti-war. Yeah, because you're the ones that are going to get drafted in some ridiculous war. This is the same crap they said to people protesting the Vietnam War, by the way, when back when this woman was probably a teenager in her early 20s. Big climate is a $1.5 trillion global industry. Greta, it's all... Big climate. You see how... how Because we all talk big oil, big pharma. These are the words we use right, to point out the big corporate entities that are ruining this planet. So what are they doing? They decided, they decided to then do the same big green thought up in an oil lobby think tank. Built on a faulty premise that carbon dioxide is like a control knob on climate. But science has shown that that is not true. Your ancestor, Svant Arrhenius, not only developed the hothouse theory of catastrophic global warming, he also amended his catastrophic view. In 1906, in this paper, he wrote in German. He decided that warming would be perhaps around 1.5 degrees Celsius and beneficial. So when people tell you that the world only has 12 years left, they're telling you science fiction, not science fact. Those scary predictions come from computer simulations that are based on a worst case scenario that is so far removed from reality, many scientists are angry that people are being scared and fooled in this way. But climate has become a big green business. That's who is greedy and uncaring. So let me see, just so you understand this nice little grandmotherly lady, the oil lobby is not scary and mean. You know, the oil lobby that helps create war and death and destruction and pollutes the planet for profit and does not care about anything. They're the good guys and big green. So the Sunrise Movement, they're all mm, Extinction Rebellion. Here's my Extinction Rebellion button. I keep forgetting to wear it. Somebody gave it to me. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to put it on. There it is, my Extinction Rebellion button. I'll put it on right now because I can't listen to this crazy lady talk her nonsense anymore about big green. Oh, big, the big scary non-for-profit environmental organizations. They're so scary. Oh, Greta, you've been lied to. Look at it. Listen how condescending this is. Listen how condescending this woman is. Could have put that on in a better way, but whatever. Big Green doesn't mind if poor people become poorer from heat or eat poverty. They just want the subsidies and the carbon credit. Now they're saying Big Green is hurting poor people? Wow. 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 This is like drug dealers saying rehab centers are tricking you. That's what this is saying. Oh, oh, Grandma. Little Canadian grandmother sitting in front of your fireplace. Do you want me to sit you down and talk about all the horrible things that have happened to people and people of all the communities? Anytime there's like fracking, contaminated water, an oil explosion, it's always in low income communities of any ethnicity, people of color, white people. If it's your low income, the oil lobby will stick it to you hard. So I don't know what this wing bird is talking about. Let them eat carbon. You said, we adults have done nothing. That's not true. What amazing advances we've made in this world. People once lived lives that were solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. That was a good description of life in the Little Ice Age just maybe 150 years ago or so. Whoa. Then you might have had to marry at age 15 because people were only expected to live until they were about 35. You say that we're stealing our children's future. I disagree. My late mother lived to the age of 93. What does it have to do with anything? Your late mother was an in late stage toxic capitalism. Oh God, this is so condescending. Oh Greta, 
If I was a white male saying these things, people on the left would be outraged. That's why I was selectively cast, because older white women can be condescending and patronizing, and they're not held as accountable, because I sound like I'm just giving you good motherly advice. Have a chocolate chip cookie that's dipped in oil, the way my grandmother would eat lumps of coal for breakfast if she liked it. It was delicious, Greta. Listen to your elders, Greta. You've been led down a horrible path of facts. She was born before the radio was invented. Her father plowed the fields behind a horse, guiding a hand plow with a yoke around his neck. She lived through the Great Depression when many people lived on the verge of starvation. She and her brothers fought in World War II, and she lived to see humans land on the moon, Greta. What incredible things humanists have accomplished. What a fabulous future you have. Yeah, dummy. We could have a fabulous future of green energy, saving the planet, putting everyone to work. We know about MMT. I have a whole MMT playlist. The money is there. How are we going to pay for it? See, this is just ridiculous. This is the oil lobby. This is the insanity of the oil lobby. And almost all of these accomplishments were only possible thanks to the power of coal, natural gas, and oil. We cannot stop climate change, Greta, but we can be prepared for changes in climate, which, if you study history, you will know that there are many. Get off the strike line and go to school. Learn to think for yourself. She is thinking for yourself. Why don't you stop taking, what, what did they pay you to do this oil thing? Be curious so you can't be fooled and have hope. We live in a world of wonder where science is about inquiry, not compliance. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. So let's find out who are the friends of science that put out these kind of ridiculously laughable videos. Greta, Greta. Go to an exhaust pipe of a running car and breathe in all of the progress, the way my grandmother did. What? It just sounds like the like well the, the at the primary debates when each corporate candidate has some like my grandfather, you know, worked in a, a, a shoe factory or whatever. <laughs> oh, who funds the Friends of Science? Do you want to take a guess? Take a guess. Who funds it? A bunch of concerned scientists? Oh no, the oil lobby. Well, who knew that was going to happen? The first board of directors in 2002 included oil industry geologist and member of the Canadian Society of Petroleum Geologists, Arthur M. Patterson. The Canadian Society of, o of Petroleum Geologists is the same in the same league with the American Petroleum Institute. So there's a huge oil industry that Justin Trudeau loves getting money from. Um, that's who funds Friends of Science. In 2004, Talisman Energy, a Calgary-based global oil and gas exploration and production company, one of Canada's largest independent and gas companies, donated $175,000 to the University of Calgary's based public relations project designed to cast doubt on scientific evidence linking human activity to global warming. That's who just paid that crazy lady. That's who's paying that. That's who's doing this. That's who's pushing all of this. They tap into fears of like right wing white males that feel threatened by everything and they It's funny, every time I do a climate change video, I usually get at least one email from a guy, with a, it's a guy's name, I don't know his ethnicity, but it's always a guy's name saying climate change isn't real. If you're gonna send me one of those emails, go ahead, waste your time, I think you're ridiculous. I'm willing, to I'm willing to listen to different points of view on a lot of subjects, not about climate denial, because this just proves my point every time. Every time someone goes, well, there's some science, it's, if it's funded by the oil lobby, it, they're lying. They're lying. The oil lobby is lying. That video is lying. That old 
grandmother who called stories, oh, in the old days we would bathe ourselves in oil and we liked it. We didn't complain, Greta. You should drink oil with me, Greta. Have an oil cold sandwich. It'll make you better and full of hope and thing wondrous in the world. I'm old and gonna die, so when the climate collapse happens, it won't bother me. <laughs> Greta, you're a threat to these people. Keep doing what you're doing. Climate deniers, you wanna post in the comment section? Please do it so we all have the names and we can make, I wanna make a database of all climate deniers and find out if you've either given, given, gotten money from the oil lobby or if you've just been drinking their Kool-Aid. Big green, oh yes. Non-for-profit, if you had to choose between a non-for-profit environmental organization or the oil companies. I did videos in Houston about oil uh, companies contaminating parks and stuff like that. Every time there's a cancer cluster, it's usually by some oil refinery or something like that. But maybe I'm wrong. But then go have a nice glass of crude oil with grandmother oil by the fireplace. We're going to drink our oil. See, climate change is not real. This oil tastes is scrumptious. Don't let Big Green tell you the lies. That blah, 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 blah. You guys watch your news here because you're not morons. Thank you so much for getting your news here. YouTube has been crushing us. Stifling my numbers, you'll notice I've been stuck at 53,000 subscribers for weeks now. They've unsubscribed, I was at 53,200, I'm under that now. So please, go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, subscribe at $5 a month or more, or go to rockfin.com, blockchain cryptocurrency platform, so it can't get bought out by Grandma Big Oil and the likes of Google who work hand in glove with the intelligence community. Thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you for, boom, making Gotham great again. And we'll see you on the road for the Progressive Comedy Tour coming to Australia in November. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all my tour dates. Thanks for watching.